So there were a number of research ethics issues that we had to um, address. I've talked a little bit about them generally, but specifically, we first had the informed consent issues because we were gathering information, sometimes about active cases, uh, and we needed to have consent to have access to those cases. And even though we had consent from the systems and the agencies themselves, we didn't have consent from the youth for us to be able to, to look at their files or to combine information about them into one case file. So we had to identify who was it that could provide us with consent. We were not allowed to have access to any of the youth. So we could not go to the youth themselves and ask them for consent. So we had to then find mechanisms for getting consent to that secondary data. That was one of the big issues that we had to deal with in terms of the research ethics issues. Um, the second one was because we were combining all the sensitive information into one large case file, we had to find mechanisms for protecting the youth. So as I said before, we, we obtained a certificate of confidentiality that protected that data from being subpoenaed and utilized in any kind of negative way against those youth because we did have a lot of information that otherwise wouldn't have been legally combined into one file. Um, third, uh, we, anything that left that site, as I said, we had to do all of our coding on site. The coding could only be done by one person, and that was to reduce the potential breaches of confidentiality. But that meant that when I left the site and took with me the coding sheets that we were going to use for our analytical database, I had to de-identify that information. I had to de-identify it both in terms of the youth as well as the professionals. Uh, that we had coded information about, not them individually, but to protect them as bystanders. And so that was then the, the fourth part, was the bystander risks to people who had not consented to for us to be able to examine their decisions. Uh, so those were the four main decisions, the four main uh, ethical issues that we had to address. Once we had extracted the data using our coding sheets, then we took that information and we entered into a larger analytical database. And we were then analyzing it from a thematic perspective of what were the various types of themes that were either similar or different from previous to the legislation being implemented to after the legislation being implemented. We looked at the specific factors that were utilized to make the decision as to whether a youth was being waived to adult court. We also took a small group of case files of youth that were eligible to be waived to adult court but hadn't been waived to adult court to see whether or not there were any similarities or differences between those youth in that decision-making process or in the content of their cases. Um, so essentially after that, we were looking at those data thematically, but again, because we were coming at it from a care perspective and looking at it from a systems of care perspective, we had data really around what kinds of supports were available to these youth and not necessarily, as I said before, in other areas such as education or the medical system to explore whether there were factors that influenced the case from that perspective. We allowed then the themes to be able to emerge from the data. So while we came at the coding from a particular perspective by asking questions of the data, like for example, uh, at what point and how did the youth interact with the child welfare system? Uh, were there any identified treatment issues? Were they addressed? Uh, what kinds of interventions were utilized. So while our questions were open-ended of the case files, when we went back to analyze the data, we allowed those answers to emerge from the data. So we allowed the answers to be constructed from that data. So this goes back to our kind of privileged position as being researchers and consultants to a larger jurisdiction around changes in their juvenile justice system. Um, when we finished our analyses, we realized that the, this piece of legislation had had such a negative impact on the system, both the juvenile justice system, the adult system, and for the children in care, that we agreed that we would not publish this information. We agreed, we wrote a report, we did a presentation to the legislature, we described what we had seen, we described the impact, we described some alternatives, but we agreed that this would not be something that we would publish in the scholarly literature because it, uh, they wanted an opportunity to be able to make their changes and then have us come back and take a look at their system again. So we agreed not to publish any of the data. We agreed that we could talk about this as a policy analysis method, but we agreed that we would not publish this information in any kind of scholarly journal, uh, that that report would stay within the legislature. And fortunately for us, we, we had a lot of debate as researchers about that. Like, were we responsible for sort of taking this public? Were we responsible for the consequences of what we had discovered? Um, we felt very responsible for what might be happening in the system, that 
we were the only ones that could potentially be aware of because we had the bird's eye view. Um, but the legislature acted very quickly. They changed the legislation. They changed the policy. And because we were there working on other projects, we could follow the trajectory of what was happening with these youth later. And because we were satisfied that systems changes had occurred by what we had discovered and what we had presented, we didn't feel like we needed to go further with that information. As a scholar, I felt it was unfortunate that I couldn't present this as a, as a policy analysis in its entirety, but it's nice to be able to talk about this as a method and not necessarily in its context. We would never have understood what the impact of this legislation was if we hadn't, done this, if we hadn't conducted this content analysis and used interviews to fill in the gaps and the process mapping, which revealed that this piece of, this piece of legislation was misunderstood and being implemented differently across this entire jurisdiction. Um, we never would have discovered any of that information. We would not have been able to describe what was happening to these youth. We would not have been able to present gaps in the system. We would not have been able to describe why there was a 250% increase using just the quantitative data. Like this qualitative data was absolutely critical to being able to both understand what had happened as well as being able to inform changes.